Thank you, sir, for sharing your inspirational journey with us. Now it is time for us to get up close and personal with our esteemed chief guest for the day, Mr. Ramji Vallath. Let's take a look at his inspiring life. Welcome you, sir. Good evening. Uh, thank you, ma'am, uh, for inviting me. I'm really honored to be in this, uh, on this great occasion. And I can see thousands of parents here. It's indeed an honor to be able to address all of them. Over the last 10 years, I have addressed over 200 different groups, delivered over 200 talks, ranging from global CEOs of Fortune 500 companies all the way down to primary school students. But the one group which I love most to talk to is parents of young children. Because I believe that's where I, ha I can have the maximum impact in terms of molding lives. So uh, indeed an honor for me. About myself, I come from a very small village in Kerala, studied in a Malayalam medium government school. Uh, the past percentage in my school was approximately 20%. And our uniform was white, dhoti, and chapels, if you can afford it. For about two or three of the 10 years, we had to sit on the floor because the school could not afford chairs or tables or, uh, 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 or benches. Fortunately, my parents inculcated a very, very deep sense of purpose in me. And I'm so thankful to them for that, because that's what drove me to try for my entrance exam in IIT. And incredibly, I managed to get a rank close to 100, an All India rank close to 100 in the IIT JE entrance exam. And I did my BTEC in IIT, and then I went on to do my uh, MBA at XLRI. And I had a rocketing career, which brought me to one of the top levels of corporate India at the age of 34. I was a chief operating officer with Airtel. I went out to become a director in HP and Dell. Unfortunately, the rocket came crashing down when I had an autoimmune condition, which, made, which completely paralyzed me at the age of 41. And I had to go through various medications. And finally, I went to the US and went through a clinical trial, uh, an experimental treatment, which completely rebooted my body. And I came back, I did not want to get back into corporate life. And I started following my real passion in life, which was writing books. And that's how my journey as an author started. And my first book was a children's book. It is a wacky science fiction for children. Uh, later on, I wrote my own life story in a very humorous fashion. And over the last 10 years, as I said, I have become a very much sought after motivational speaker. I've delivered over 200 talks. And I have a new purpose in life today. You know, Earlier it was to become the global CEO of a Fortune 500 company. Today my target is to touch a million lives positively. And I've been quite successful in doing that. Uh, the last few years have been fraught with a lot of challenges. Over the last uh, five years, I might have fallen, tripped and fallen about 50 times. I've had about eight to 10 fractures in various parts of my body, including major and minor fractures. However, it is the incredible resilience again which my parents inculcated and instilled in me, which has helped me convert every one of these downfalls into something really positive. So today I actually thank them for all the values and qualities that they instilled in me, in me which has helped me uh, make a success of every one of these setbacks. And what I want to share with you is what a few pointers as to what you can do to ensure that your children uh, are brought up with the kind of positive attitude which will finally help them succeed in life no matter what. Uh, the book Active Parenting is all about that. Of course, if I have to talk about the whole book, it'll take maybe five hours for me to finish. So let me just pick a few very important pointers. The most important one is that while you leave it to the school to inculcate uh, the knowledge, the subject matter knowledge, and in this school I can see that 
when the name of the school is made of the qualities and values which are important for life. So this school is going to do much more than just deliver subject matter knowledge. But as parents, what you need to focus on is what I call social and emotional maturity of your children. All your time should be spent constantly on that. And as parents, you should be aware that you're all the time parents. And whatever you do, every single act that you do will have an impact on your children. Be aware of that. And that's what I call active parenting. Because constantly you are thinking of what is right for your child and doing that. And I can tell you something, that if you want your children to become wonderful human beings, the first thing you have to do is reflect and ask yourself, what am I doing to make them wonderful human beings? You yourself have to become better and better every day of your existence for them to become better human beings. I think sometimes all the illnesses and setbacks that I've had, because that gave me an opportunity to showcase what it is to be a positive human being to my children. So sometimes even that setback and all the difficulties I've gone through have been such powerful motivation lessons for my children. Uh, so, so let me look at three, four, three of the quality, five of the qualities which are really important for you to inculcate in your children. The first is what I said, a sense of purpose. If you instill a sense of purpose in your children, then you can just let them go on autopilot. You don't have to micromanage them ever. Because the sense of purpose you instilled in them will ensure that they go after their goals. They set themselves lofty goals and go after them consistently. So that's the most important, uh, one of the most important qualities, which is purpose. The second one is, you know, your children are going to have long, 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 long lives ahead. They will fail time and again. And that is a given fact because you cannot control all the variables in, in life. There are so many issues which can crop up and make you fail. The ability to pick yourself up every time you fall, not just pick yourself up, but use the strength of the fall to propel yourself to the next level. That ability is resilience. And you need to inculcate that in your children from early childhood. Now, an important aspect of resilience is having a set of people who are guiding you, who are constantly with you, who are supporting you. A network. To inculcate that network around you, the child has to be, most importantly, an authentic person. Somebody who's transparent, somebody who's trusted by their peers. So to make an authentic person out of your child, that is the other goal that you should have. So purpose, resilience, authenticity. And I consider myself, in spite of all the setbacks I have, to be the happiest person I have met in my life. And I ask myself, what is it that helped me become that? Again, the answer goes back to the upbringing that I had and the parenting I had. So it is up to you to make sure that irrespective of what your children go through, they're able to find happiness. Find happiness in the journey rather than in the goals itself. So constantly you should be able to mold your children to be happy with what they have. Gratitude, compassion, etc., come as part of that. Now, it's not enough that you bring them up to become happy people. Uh, happiness, true happiness can come in only if you can also spread happiness around you. And that can happen when Children are socially conscious. They are not only thinking of themselves, but they're thinking of the larger society around them and of the people immediately surrounding them as well as the entire world. And consciously trying to figure out how can they add value to the world. So social consciousness is another extremely important quality you need to instill. So I have coined a very nice phrase for this, socially conscious, happy, authentic, resilient, purpose-driven, S-H-A-R-P. Bring your children up to become sharp. Now, what are the strategies and what are the techniques you can use? There are a bunch of them. I've tried to put that in my book. If you have the time, do pick up the book, Active Parenting, and read it. But let me give you three specific pointers which are very important. Uh, one strategy 
which I, I found extremely important, and this is through four or five years of research that I put in. Make sure you are, you are the best friend to your children, but with very strong boundaries. So it's a tightrope walk in terms of how much permissive you can be at the same time, how much demanding you need to be. Both of these and the balancing both these are extremely important. So let me ask you this question. I want all of you to put up your hand who is actually following this. How many of you hug your children at least two to three times a day? Okay. Very good. I'm so glad to see this. Now there is a strong scientific evidence that the more you hug your children, the more confident they become in life. In fact, the hug by a parent or the patting on the back or the, uh, the touch, the holding of the hand, all these tend to actually decrease the cortisol levels which lead to stress and anxiety. So the more you hug them, the more confident they become, the better they become at facing the world. So do remember this, and from today, if you're not doing it, and I, I'm this specifically to the uh, fathers, because many of the fathers don't do this. They think it is uh, the, uh, the mother's duty. It's not. It's both of, your, uh, both of your parents, both of you need to do this. And uh, my kids, I hug them all the way till 25. My daughter is sitting there. She's a doctor in the UK. Even now, when she's come back for the holiday, I spend at least five minutes hugging them every day, her every day. And I do that with my son also, who is 22 years old. So uh, this is one. The number two one, and again, I want you to put up your hand. How many of you have every single day at least one meal as a family together without any screen around you? When I say screen, I mean phone, TV, all those. Right? Yeah, not too many hands. This is, this is not on. You guys have to improve on this. This is, this is the, the dinner together as a family is where values are built. It is where values are built. It's where perspectives are built. Because the, the, the kind of chat you can have with your children over dinner, the informal chat, the banter, the talk about what's happening around the world, as parents, you can impart so much of perspective to your children on what uh, the current situation in the country, in the world. And that's so important because, you know, between the time you were children to now, the information flow to your children has grown up, gone up, gone up not, not by two or three fold, but it's hundred to thousand fold. There's so much of information flowing at them all the time. How do you convert that information into gems? How do you convert those in, that information into something which is valuable, which you can actually uh, help in inculcating great values in them? And that only as parents you can do. And the most important time is this informal time during dinner when you're spending with them. Make sure that there is no phone, no TV, no tablet around you when you do that. That's absolutely critical. And just a corollary, Please do not get your children smartphones. Your kids are going to hate me for this. Do not get them smartphones till at least the age of 14 or 15. And even after that, make sure there is a bit of a time, time limit to how much they can spend. The, your brain structure actually changes by constantly being online, right? The third question is, uh, how many, uh, so we talked about uh, building, uh, friendship with your children, but equally important is uh, having discussions with them about, uh, and very, very nuanced discussions with them about both sides of every aspect that happens. You know, today there are some big issues happening in this country, and you will see tremendous amount of pol uh, polarization that's happening in the society. There are people who hate each other now, you know, and who I mean, every WhatsApp group you go to, there are people with completely different viewpoints who are shouting at each other. And is it possible for you to actually tell your children, take one subject at a time and tell them both sides ex and ensure that they keep thinking about both sides of every issue 
so that they have much broader minds, right? So this is about, as I said, befriending. At the same time, uh, so as you grow uh, closer and closer to them as friends, it's also important for you to set very strong boundaries. Uh, never forget that your parents and do not give in to many of the things that they might demand, which you know are not good for them. After all, you are not going to let your child sit and eat chocolate every day uh, 20 times, right? You will actually put a stop to that. Similarly, there are many other things which are information, etc., availability, etc., which you will have to actually put a, a block to. And another aspect of befriending your children is to be immersed in their pop culture. What shows are they watching? Who are their best friends? Who are the influencers on them? And there are some hundreds of influencers which you don't know about because they are living in a completely different time uh, era compared to you. You need to immerse yourself, understand their cool things in life. The more of their cool things you pick up, the better you will be as a parent in terms of influencing them. So <coughs> it's one thing to give instructions. They might take it, they may not take it because they fear you. But it's far easier to influence them if you are at the same level and imparting, uh, imparting wisdom as an influencer rather than as an instructor. So number one is befriending. Number two, and this is my favorite, is make sure you tell them lots and lots of stories. Stories have this amazing ability. I mean, it, it, they have so many positive effects on your child. Number one is creativity and imagination goes up. Number two is that their perspective widens. Number three is their communication skills become better. Number four is that they are able to think of uh, various things from different angles. They're able to put themselves in the shoes of the storyteller. So every one of these aspects are so important for social and emotional maturity of your children. Starting at this, I mean, you might be having grade one uh, parents here, grade five parents here, and in between. There are different varieties, uh, different grades of stories that you can tell them, but keep telling them stories. And if you don't know enough stories, you please go online, mug up some stories, and tell them stories. And you know, even in our uh, culture, there are itihasas and puranas which have tremendous amount of stories. And it doesn't have to be all, all mor moral stories. You don't have to give them moral lessons. Just tell the story. They are smart enough. They will pick up the morals and the lessons from the stories. And the third, but not the least, uh, is um, whatever instructions you give, if you do not follow it up with actions, it's not going to work. So make sure that you walk the talk. Make sure that you role model whatever behavior you want your children to have. You can, it's one thing to keep telling them you have to respect elders, you have to respect people around you, etc. But if you don't respect as parents each other, you don't respect people around you, including let's say your domestic help or your driver or somebody who of a, uh, of a uh, uh, economic class which is lower than yours. If you do not respect the child and Treat them as an individual with an individual difference, uh, the different perspective in life. They are not going to listen to you when you say, please respect everybody. Whatever you want your child to be, first you have to be. That's why I said, great parenting makes you a greater person. So those are the three lessons I want to leave with you. <coughs> I want to talk about a small, uh, another one minute about a study that was conducted in the U UK. It's called the British Cohort Study. It involved, actually, they picked up uh, for one week, all the children who were born during that one week in 1950, uh, and about 17,000 children, they followed their life all the way till the age of 60 or 70, right? And uh, looked at all the milestones happened, all the inputs that went into the child. They did that same thing again in the 1960s, uh, another 10 to 15,000 children, 1970s, 80s, 2000. And the most important lesson that they got out of that is that the success and happiness of a child uh, as they grow up to become adults, the most important factor that impacted the success and happiness 
is nothing but the involvement of the parents. How much time does this parent actually spend with the child in a positive fashion? That alone contributed to 80% of the success of the children. It does not matter which school they go to. It does not matter uh, how rich they are. It does not matter who is a teacher. It matters what the parent did. So be active parents. Ensure that you bring up wonderful children who are going to be great citizens of this country. Wish you all the very best. Thank you.